How can you get the best results with your accelerated self-healing program? Well, some, some aspects are obvious, like take the remedies, although it's not always obvious. I've had a few clients who can't take the remedies internally and have had to begin by working either just with putting the remedies on their photograph, which we can do remotely, or, or contemplating feeling the remedies. Uh, one of my earliest clients was blind, couldn't even you know, enter a hospital to, to have surgery to remove cataracts, a young woman, but she could, we found she could hold the remedies for one minute twice a day it was, was what began her healing process and eventually she could branch out and do other, other types of healing. She was having to live on the top of a mountain with no electromagnetic fields, no chemicals, just you know, a, an eye-opening experience for me to see the range of sensitivity we have, but to interact energetically with the therapeutic energies that are embodied in these remedies. Most of them will be physical substances, even uh, maybe just as a carrier of energy and information, but drops you put in your water, drops you put under your tongue, some capsules or tablets or powders that you mix into, into food, etc. Uh, other, other remedies might include affirmations, uh, visualization, other exercises. So, so it can be actions of, of that nature as well. So working with those on a daily basis is, is crucial to the healing process. We will give you suggested dosages and consider that kind of a, a, a range or a maximum to, to feel out. If you know you're sensitive, you always want to start at a low dose. It's, it's like a Japanese hot tub, a furo. You don't dive in. It might be too hot for you, so you stick in your pinky toe or your pinky finger to test the waters, and that's what I'm talking about. If, it's, if you're very sensitive, you probably know what I mean. You know, one a woman many years ago, I, I was speaking to at a, at a, a presentation in New York and, and uh, heard a little of her history after, after I gave the talk, and it became obvious to me that she needs bacterial flora for her gut. Right? It was just gut problems that, that flora should help with all of those. And so when I suggested that, she said, well, the thing is, I've talked to this doctor and that, she named you know, several famous holistic medical doctors, and they all suggested the same thing, you know, read the case the same as I did, and she had tried it, and each time she got sick. So she took a capsule, made her sick, so she stopped taking it. So when she told me that, it became obvious how sensitive she is, and how much her system needs it all the more, but that we had to start with a minimum dose. And so I told her, so you're gonna take this broad spectrum uh, bacterial supplement, friendly flora, you're gonna open the capsule, you're gonna take a pinch, I mean the smallest pinch you can see, and start with that the first day and see how you react. And she was able to do that. She was able to take the smallest pinch that she could see and not have that strong reaction. Why? Because she's taking a, a, a baby step. It's like if you hadn't exercised in 30 years and you're completely out of shape and you say, every doctor tells me I should get in shape and start exercising, say, okay, I'm, I, 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 so I go out and I buy a membership to the gym and, and I have them, you know, run me through the exercise routine and, 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 and I'm flat on my back for a week. I'm sick, I'm worse, it makes me worse. We call this negative regulation. And it's actually a sign your body is responding. It's not the worst situation. The worst situation is if she had said, well, other doctors have told me that and I take the flora and it doesn't change anything. That's blocked regulation. It doesn't mean that, that in that situation that you don't need the bacterial flora, but it means that something else on a deeper level is blocked. So this, the terrain is not able to change with that healthy, normal input that, that should typically change it. So blocked regulation is the worst, where there's just no response at all. You know, some people would tell me, oh, I've tried herbs, they don't work. I've tried homeopathy, it doesn't work. I've tried, you know, nutritional supplements, they don't work. Well, if they were well-selected remedies, in other words, things that that body, that person actually did need, it doesn't mean that the remedies didn't work. It means they didn't work yet, but it really means that your body is not working. It's not responding. As, as it ideally should, could, would, if it were able to. And so that's one of the hardest times to, to break through where you really need to understand regulation. That's why, why we have courses on 
the five levels of regulation. So if you're in blocked regulation, you can realize the critical importance of two things. One is sticking to the program, but even more importantly, to know that you're taking the right program because there's, you can go online and find a million different programs that theoretically should be good for you, but theory is different than practice. It's like the map is different from the actual terrain. You're the actual terrain, and that's where you know, the rubber meets the road, and so we need what I consider to be uh, evidence-based medicine is evidence about you and how your body responds to particular inputs, particular stimuli, particular remedies or therapies. So to have a, a, a study based on a thousand people that says most people, even if it's 90% of people with this condition respond to this treatment. Yeah, but are you part of the 90% or 10%? The study doesn't tell you that. That's where evidence-based medicine to me is evidence about you and your body's response. And the best way to identify that, in my opinion, is through the energy field, because the energy field of the body is a compilation of every single chemical reaction happening in that moment throughout the body. It's, it takes all of the chemistry into account. And, and same on an information level, when your, your biocommunication that's carried by that energy field is, t is a universal uh, consciousness field. It's not just your, your conscious awareness of your senses. It's not even just the subconscious of what is happening in your nervous system that you're not thinking about, not aware of. It's what is happening on a cellular and an atomic level throughout your body, throughout your field, throughout your field, which actually extends to the stars, to the heavens. When you see a star, you're not just here in your body and the stars over there and there's, there's no connection. It's part of your sensory field, your perceptual field, which is literally projected out into space. It's, you're seeing you and it's not limited to the, the electrical activity in the brain, which is the current conventional thinking that, that the, the sky is inside the skull. It, we see it where it is when we see truly uh, veridically it's the image is where it is and there's there's mounting evidence both from remote healing studies and from remote uh, uh, visualization uh, remote perception remote uh, remote viewing studies in both cases with remote healing remote viewing there's actual hard evidence that what is being viewed or what is being healed that that perceptual energetic interaction with that remote target, that remote person, or the star out there, well, we can measure it here on the, on the planet where we have instrumentation, that there's an, a remote energetic effect. If you're praying for healing for a family member, and we put, uh, we put very sensitive like squid devices around that person, when there's healing going on, we can actually measure the change in the energy field that's coming from your thoughts and traveling as like a, a, a scalar information wave uh, across time and space to that person. Mm -hmm.